Hello everyone and welcome! In this video we're going to be talking about why you might want a spoiler or rear wing on a front wheel drive vehicle. And I'm not talking about the Civic in your driveway, I'm talking about, you know, a very performance oriented vehicle. And it often comes up, you know, that front wheel drive vehicles, they don't need uh, spoilers for some odd reason. I don't know what people think the logic is there is. I guess you only need traction on the front wheels if you have a front wheel drive vehicle. But you know, the logic there could simply be, well then why would you upgrade uh, your rear tires? Why not just leave really crappy tires in the rear and really nice tires in the front? So I think this is something that most of you probably understand, but we're gonna get into four of the reasons basically behind why it would be a good idea to have a performance vehicle with a spoiler on it, even if it was front wheel drive. And so the first thing we're going to get into is cornering, and this is going to bring up the lovely equation force equals coefficient of friction times the normal force. Um, and this is an equation I've used quite a bit in my previous videos, and I'll have all kinds of related content in the video description. So if you want to get into more detail into one of these subjects, check out the video description. I'll have the videos linked there. So the cornering force that this vehicle can hold is equivalent to the coefficient of friction between the tire and the ground multiplied by the normal force, in other words, the weight of the car. So you've got this force pushing down uh, on the vehicle, the weight of the car, and if you add to that normal force uh, with down force, you have more force pushing down on this. So if your normal force goes up, then the force that the car can corner with goes up. Simple as that. Better cornering with a spoiler on a front wheel drive vehicle. Let's move on to braking. So here we have a vehicle and it's front wheel drive and it's got this rear wing on the back giving it plenty of downforce on that rear wheel. Well, why would you want more downforce on it? Same equation, same idea basically. If you increase uh, the downforce, Normal force is equal to the downforce plus the load on the tire. So you're increasing the normal force, increasing the normal force increases the braking force. So the maximum braking force you can have is equivalent to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal force on that tire. Now with a vehicle under heavy braking, what happens is you have load transfer to the front tires. So the rear tires don't get to do all that much. But if you have a rear wing providing downforce that's applying pressure onto that rear wheel, then the amount of work that that rear wheel can do through braking will improve. So by having that rear wing, you're going to improve your braking because you're going to have more braking that you can split, uh, have some of the rear wheel do it, and you'll have more braking possible as a result of increasing uh, the normal force. Now another method you could have active aerodynamics, so you could have a rear wing which simply folds up um, and then you just use drag to slow the vehicle down. Now once again that's going to have to be doing with, for both of these and for pretty much all of this, you're going to have to be at high enough speeds where the wing is actually effective or the spoiler is effective based on you know the aerodynamics of the vehicle and you know how much it weighs, things like that. So here we have center of pressure moving on. And so if you were to remove this rear wing from this front wheel drive incredible looking vehicle, well, basically you're gonna move your center of pressure forward. So if it's got a lot of downforce up front, but not much in the rear, you're gonna move the center of pressure, the center of all those forces where they're acting upon right here. So what that means is the front tire is gonna have more downforce than the rear tire. And so what that means is, in a situation where you're going around a corner, the front tires have more grip. So when you start to reach the limit, basically you're gonna reach the limit with the rear tires first, and the rear tires are gonna slide out if you go uh, too fast around a corner. What you want to happen is you want them to be balanced. And so you want this center of pressure over the center of gravity of the vehicle, so you wanna keep that rear wing, and what that does is all four of the vehicle's tires will lose traction simultaneously. So you wanna be able to reach the limit with all four tires rather than just two of them, so two of them aren't holding you back, and you can get the most out of the tires. Finally, let's move on to reduce lift. So a very simple method of reducing lift is adding a spoiler to a vehicle. So here we have a vehicle on top with no spoiler, incredible looking once again. And as you can see that air, as it swoops over the back of the vehicle, it will follow the path of the vehicle and aim downward. And so as that air is directed downward, it's gonna be lifting up the vehicle. It's gonna be creating lift. Uh, and so this rear end is gonna to start to get loose, not have quite as much traction uh, because it doesn't have that normal force pushing down on it. And so if you add a simple spoiler to the rear there, you can see that airflow now won't be able to redirect itself downward. And so you're gonna eliminate that lift or reduce that lift and the car won't have as much lift. It'll have more traction and be able to do all the things that a car needs to do better. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. And once again, don't forget to check out the video description for links to all kinds of related material.